Hi, welcome to this video. So this video is a part of the popular Udemy course on hands-on natural language processing using Python. So if you really enjoy this video, then make sure to check the description section where a special coupon directly to the course is given. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this natural language processing tutorial. So in the previous video, we have finished building our bag of words model, right? And I had told you that in this video, what we are going to do is we will talk about the problems associated with the bag of words model. And we will also figure out some way by which we can build a model, which is much more efficient compared to the bag of words model, right? So, you know, when we talk about the bag of words model, so this is what we got, right? So there are the different words and the different documents. And if a word appears in a document, we will put a one over here. And if a word does not appear in the document, then we will put a zero, right? So this is the logic of the whole bag of words model. So let's find out what are the problems associated with it. So, you know, the first problem is all the words have the same importance, right? So here, as you can see that the word going or the word to or the word today, all of them have been represented with ones. So you can't pretty much distinguish that, you know, which word is what, right? You don't know that whether this is going or this is to or this is today. So when you feed this model into a machine learning algorithm, then the algorithm will be confused or the algorithm will think that, well, you know what, all these words have the same impact on a document. But well, let me just close it. So that's not what we want, isn't it? We want something else. What we want is that some words in a document have to be given more importance, right? Because say I tell you a sentence like you are an awesome guy or you are an awesome girl. Then in this sentence, the word awesome is most important, right? Because if I just alter the word awesome with something else, then the complete meaning of the sentence will change, isn't it? So that word awesome has a great meaning associated to it. So similarly, in every sentence, there are some important words, but this bag of words model, which is also called the binary bag of words model, does not give any importance to such things, right? It only represents the words as zeros and ones and so on. So, you know, that is the same reason why this, you know, the no semantic information is preserved is also not satisfied in case of bag of words model, right? So we are not preserving any semantic information. We are not preserving information like which word is important and which word is not and so on. So let's find out how we can really improve this bag of words model. And the solution is a TF IDF model. Now we will get into it that what is TF, what is IDF and what is the whole model and so on. But you know, this is the example that I gave you a while ago, right? So here we have a sentence called she is beautiful. Now here the word beautiful will have more importance compared to the word she or the word is, right? Because if I just, you know, kind of change this beautiful with ugly or something like that, then the whole meaning of the sentence pretty much changes. So this is what the TF-IDF model does. It gives importance to the specific, to the uncommon, to the important words. So let's find out how we can build our own TF-IDF model and what is the model. So here we have the same sample corpus. So it's going to rain today. Today I'm not going outside and I'm going to watch the season premiere. So let's find out how we can, you know, pretty much make a DFIDF model out of these sentences. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to lower the sentences, right? So we are lowering each of the capital characters into their corresponding small characters, right? And this is what we got after doing all of that. And in the next step, as in case of the bag of words model, we would have to tokenize each of the sentences into different words. So this is sentence one, it contains all the different words in the sentence. This is sentence two, this is sentence three and so on, right? And after this, let's find out what is the TF-IDF model and so on. So TF-IDF is the addition of two words. So here TF means term frequency of a particular word in a particular document. So, you know, you have a whole list of documents or a whole corpus of documents. And in each of the documents, you have a bunch of words, right? 
So TF of a word in a document simply means that what is the term frequency of that word in that particular documents, right? So for each word and each document, we are going to have a specific TF value. And this IDF is a inverse document frequency. Now, this IDF is not calculated per document, rather it is calculated for the whole corpus. So it simply means the inverse document frequency of a word in the whole corpus of documents. And so, you know, for each of the words, we are only going to have a single IDF value. Now, the TF value for each word and each document and the IDF value for each word, right? And if we multiply the IDF with the TF, then we will pretty much get the TF-IDF value of a specific word in a specific document. And this is what TF-IDF model is. So here is the formula for the term frequency. So, you know, we have the number of occurrences of a word in a document. So we are talking about a single document when, it, when we are talking about term frequency, right? So the number of occurrences of a word in a specific document divided by the number of words in the whole document. So when I say the word I am beautiful or you are beautiful, then, you know, the word beautiful, if I have to, you know, find the term frequency of the word beautiful, then it would be one by three, right? Because beautiful appears only once in the document and the number of words in the document is three. So we will have here one by three, which is the term frequency of beautiful in the word you are in a sentence, you are beautiful, right? So now let's take an example and find out we can how we can really, you know, pretty much found the, find the term frequency of the different words. So here I have a sentence which is to be or not to be. And we are going to find the term frequencies for each of the different terms in the whole sentence. So first the term is to. Now if you see the sentence then two appears twice in the whole sentence, right? So that's the reason why I've written here one plus one. And what are the number of words in the whole sentence? Well, it's six, right? So we will just write here six. So one plus one by six is the term frequency of two, which is 0 0.33. So similarly, you can find the term frequency for B as well, which is also 0 0.33. And for OR, it is 0 0.16 because, you know, OR appears only once. So it's 1 by 6 and 1 by 6 is 0 0.16. So, you know, we have all the different words in the different sentences, right? So these are our three sentences. We have tokenized them into words. And we can pretty much find out the term frequencies for all the words, right? So if you remember what this is, right? So this is the histogram or the filtered histogram from the bag of words model. So we can pretty much, you know, do the same steps like creating the histogram and then selecting the n largest from the histogram and pretty much form this. The only difference between this and the bag of words model is that I've only considered here eight words instead of 10 words. So this is it. And this is the filtered histogram. So now we are going to find out the term frequencies for each of the different words in the histogram. So how can we really do that? Well, we have sentence one, right? So we are going to find out the term frequencies for each of these words in sentence one. So as you can see, going in sentence one, well, it appears once and the number of words in the sentence one is six, right? So we have here one by six. Similarly, you know, 1 by 6 is 0 0.16, right? So similarly, for 2, we also have 0 0.16 because 2 appears only once in the whole sentence. For today, we have 0 0.16. For I, we have 0 by 6 because, you know, I does not appear in sentence 1. And that's the reason we have 0 occurrences of I over here and divided by the total number of words in sentence 1. So we have here 0. Similarly, M is 0. It is 0 0.16, 0 0.16, 0 0.16. And now we are going to loop through document two and going in document two is 0 0.16 again. Two is not there, so zero. And you know, similarly, we can pretty much find out all the different term frequencies for all the different documents. And when we are done, we will get something like this. So this is the term frequency matrix for each of the words, you know, corresponding to each of the documents and so on. So 
in this tfidf model now we have the term frequency so we have this so what we have to find out next is we need to find out the inverse document frequency right because only then we can pretty much multiply tf with idf so the formula to calculate the inverse document frequency is you just pass you know the number of documents divided by the number of documents containing the specific word and you pass all of that into a log base e so you know this is a log base e by the way so this is a log base e and inside of this you pass the number of documents by the number of documents containing the word so from this formula itself you can just find out right that the inverse document frequency for a word is fixed in the you know right so it is not variable for the different documents so for a whole corpus of documents you have a single idf value for a specific word so now let's again take an example and find out how it really works so we have three sentences over here to be or not to be i have to be you got to be so let's try to find out how you can you know pretty much get the inverse document frequencies of the different words so we'll start here with the word two now we have written here log you know this is again log base e and in this log the first parameter is the number of documents so here as you can see the number of documents is one two and three so we have written here three divided by the number of documents where the word two appears so two is in all the documents right so we also have written here a three right so it's three by three which is one and log of one is zero so the idea value of Two is zero corresponding to these three documents similarly we can find out the idea value of b which should also be zero we can find the idea value of have which should be log of three divided by one so i have no idea what is that so you can just pretty much find it out right so here in our main corpus we have these three sentences again and we need to find out the idea values for the different sentences right so you know this is again the filtered histogram so now let's create the whole IDF matrix. So we have these different words. And now we have all these different sentences and you know, I have already written here the different IDF values. So you can pretty much find out, right? The going appears in all the different sentences. So we have log of three by three, two appears in two of these sentences. So we have log of three by two. Then for today we have three by two and for it we have three by one. So this is pretty much how we can find out the idea values for all the different words and we will be you know we will end up with something like this so now we have the tf and we have the idf right so this is the tf and this is the idf so now we are ready to create our own tf idf model so let's do it so you know this is how this tf idf model is going to look like and it pretty much looks like a back of words model isn't it we have the different documents we have the different words as columns but you know the we won't be filling here zeros and ones we'll be filling here some different numbers and this is the formula right so tfidf of a specific word in you know in a document is equal to tf or the term frequency of the word in that specific document multiplied by the inverse document frequency of the word so let's try to find out so first is the word going in case of document one so we need to find out the tf idea value of the word going in document one right and which is you know this cell the first cell so here as you can see we have the idea value of going is zero right and for document one the term frequency value of going is 0 0.16 so we can pretty much multiply zero with 0 0.16 and we will get the tf idea value of going in this document one so we'll have here 0 multiplied by 0 0.16 and we'll get a 0, right? Similarly, we can find it for 2 as well. And, you know, 2 has an IDF value of 0 0.41 and 2 has an IDF, you know, the TF value in document 1 is 0 0.16. So we can multiply 0 0.41 and 0 0.16 and we will get the TF IDF value of 2 in the first document. Similarly, we can do it for today, you know, for i and so on and when we are pretty much done with this then this is what we will have so this is our bag of words or I sh 
So this is our TF-IDF model. Now you can directly see some kind of you know changes compared to the bag of horse model, isn't it? The bag of horse model contained only zeros and ones, but this model contains, you know, it contains zeros because of the IDF values, but it contains these fractional values, right? The 0 0.07, the 0 0.17, you know, 0 0.05 and so on. So when we are doing it on a huge corpus of data, we have this bunch of decimal values and if you look at closely at these different values then you would be able to find out that most of the important words in the whole document have higher value you know the higher fractional value over there right so the word rain is a very important word in our three document corpus so it has a very high value of 0 0.17 and so on so and you can see you know the word going is a very common word right because it appeared in all the documents so it got the lowest tfidf value which is zero so similarly in this way in the tfidf model we can pretty much you know give more importance to some specific words words that matter and that is the reason why this model is extensively used in case of text classification or you know opinion mining and many other applications and so on and we are also going to be using it for our own text classifier later on so that's it and in the next video we will start building our own tfidf model in python from scratch so that is it and i will see you in the next one